Hi, I'm Nico. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, I think, is a really important point and uh, one that, if you're not already uh, aware of it, is going to make you uh, leap forward with your photography. So let's not delay any longer. Let's do it. When photographing a location, and that can be a city, a neighborhood, a national park, a music festival, in my opinion, you are far better off uh, having a theme. Uh, call it a subject, call it a, a commentary, call it a, an angle. Uh, what I mean is you need to know, walking in, the kind of uh, ideas you're after, the kind of uh, idea you're pursuing with your photography. So this is true in any location, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to angle it more towards shooting your own city, shooting in your own backyard. Um, because uh, I heard... Uh, David uh, Alan Harvey say if you can't do it in your own backyard forget about going to do it somewhere else in the world and I agree with that sentiment uh, also this has to be the complaint or the lament I have uh, heard and read the most online uh, on forums or on comments to YouTube videos is there is nothing to shoot around me I live in a boring place and uh, that might be true, some places are more boring than others but I think if you have a theme uh, no matter how lightly it relates to the place where you are if you have that theme you will start finding pictures that fit within that theme uh, I have been both photographers, I've been the photographer who has the camera on him 24-7 and who has the skills but doesn't really have a theme and uh, what would happen is that uh, I would mostly take my camera to take a picture when something in front of me already looked like a photograph. Like, oh, here's a sunset, oh, here's a lady who dropped a bag of oranges in the middle of the street. Uh, I would take those pictures that are obvious and that everybody has taken before and... Because my eye would only turn on when I saw something that already looked like a picture. But then I became this other photographer, the one that has a camera on him, maybe 24-7, doesn't matter, but knows what the theme is, knows what the project is uh, related to that location. And what happened then is that I took my camera out more often and much less randomly because I took my camera out every time something matched my theme. And I started noticing things and capturing things that... I would never have noticed, uh, based on their visual uh, appealingness, but alone. Because these were not very beautiful scenes, or they were not very well lit, or the composition wasn't obvious, but they matched the theme. So I was like, I have to make it work. And this is when creativity creativity starts. It's when you have to like, make something ugly look harmonious and beautiful in your frame. It's this rare occasion where I can actually show you, because I took... Uh, two trips to Mexico one in 2013 I was two and a half years out of photo school so pretty fresh in the photography game but perfectly capable and with a good camera and plenty of time and the energy of youth so I flew to the um, Yucatan Peninsula and uh, as you can see uh, my pictures are not bad, but they're all over the place. I'm photographing hotel maids at their workplace or in buses. I'm taking random street portraits, pictures of my mates, picture of this nice wall that was around the corner from my hotel in different lights. Those little girls were giving a Christmas show that evening and I caught her like backstage, which was in the street behind the, the park some random street photography where nothing really happens um, oh this one is kind of cool in a slice of life kind of way it's uh, the altar uh, near the entrance to the bullfighting arena so I assume this is where uh, bullfighters take a minute to um, pray before entering the arena towels drying on the roof maybe maybe connected to the, the hotel maids in my mind back then so as you can see, a collection of okay photographs, but uh, no real overarching point, and they don't really go together well as a collection. Uh, the only thing in that archive that is not uh, painful for me to revisit is that collection of uh, WW Beatles. 
individually uh, not great photos but together as a group I think they make a really fun print and this was uh, this is something that I'm still kind of fond of contrast this to 2019 uh, I am six uh, six years older and wiser and I go back to Mexico but this time I have a theme uh, I specifically travel around uh, the 31st of October to the 2nd of November which is the celebrations of Dia de Muertos uh, and my theme is uh, life and death and afterlife in Mexico. So coincidentally, uh, my final edit for the previous Mexico trip was 70 pictures. Uh, for this trip, it's 40. So I kept less pictures because this time I knew exactly what had to be kept to fit in my subject and to tell my story. But I think uh, I shot more because when you know um, what your theme is when you work on it for a few days and you start to have understanding on a visual level of what it takes to tell your story you start to notice pictures uh, pictures that you would have walked on by but now you're taking them because you know they're going to fit the theme I ha happened upon this church and there was a funeral going home so I immediately stepped out thinking this wasn't my place but instead of uh, continuing on with my day I thought no, this fits with my theme I'm gonna stay outside of that church for as long as it takes and I will get the picture of the coffin uh, being taken out through the main door. So you can see that I stayed there, I uh, metered, I prepared my uh, framing and my composition ready and then I waited. Uh, I think I waited uh, almost half an hour. When they finally came out, I got the shot that I wanted. Uh, there's plenty of uh, examples of photographers who work this way um, because I think it's just the professional way to work. Uh, I have Alex Hoff, uh Niagara book up there, that's not a coincidence. He went to Niagara Falls, uh, possibly the most photographed location in North America. But he didn't go just looking for pretty pictures and put his camera wherever he was inspired to put it. He had a very specific theme, which was love. So he took pictures of rings in a pawn shop, so he took pictures of love letters, he took pictures of a heart-shaped bathtub. Uh, things that he might have never photographed if he was only looking for um, appealing pictures to make. Uh, Niagara Falls is famous for uh, engagements, weddings, it's uh, considered a very romantic location. So he didn't have to dig very deep to find his theme, it was pretty, pretty obvious, it was right there. And that's another thing, like you don't have to think your theme here has to be complicated. It can be as simple as youth, love, uh, public transport, immigration. I'll give you a bunch more themes uh, later in this video. Another example is uh, Bruce Davidson, uh, the New York photographer, early in his career. He went to Coney Island, but he didn't photograph the rides and the bloody uh, roller coaster. He found this group of kids that hung there every day and that called themselves a gang and he, he followed them, he made them the center of the story. Later he did a project in the subway. Uh, what a clever way to make a project about New York uh, while being original and avoiding all the cliches that haven't been photographed before. He didn't just say like, oh, I'm going to do New York. He said, I'm going to do New York and my theme is the subway. Staying in New York, another example is uh, Martha Cooper. Uh, who also shot in New York, but uh, her theme was um, graffiti and street art and uh, she shot it with like such success that she became a legend in the street art uh, world. Following a theme is also, I think, a great way to end up with pictures that uh, look and feel like yours. Um, I said in the video about uh, style, your theme and your obsessions and the things you go back to over and over again are part of your style. Um, you cannot describe the style of Martin Parr without mentioning that uh, his theme is always the same. Uh, Paul Graham, a British photographer, in the 80s when he did um, his iconic book um, A1, The Great North Road, didn't just decide that he was going to shoot the UK. He picked the theme of following this one highway and he stayed extremely close to the highway for the entire trip, never venturing very far. And that landed to him shooting a lot of gas stations, uh, roadside cafes and um, a lot of working class simple people because that's who you find working in these places. So having this tight theme and uh, sticking to it tightly uh, gave uh, an iconic body of work. 
at the same time, there were people like Joel Mayerowitz who were just shooting in the street and shooting anything that they found appealing. So I'm not saying the other way of working doesn't uh, exist or hasn't ever worked for anyone. Uh, Alex Webb is another example of a photographer who just shoot pictures that look like Alex Webb's. The problem that I see is that uh, neither you or me are Alex Webb. So not being amazing geniuses, we have to do with the cards that were dealt to us. Let's do one more of mine because I enjoy public humiliation. Uh, this is a very recent work. I was in Biarritz uh, just three weeks ago. Uh, it's a city in southwest France that's famous for being one of the uh, major uh, European surf spots. So even though the city has amazing architecture, great light, uh, very interesting street scenes, uh, great restaurants and what have you, I decided that my theme uh, would be surf culture and youth. I stuck to that and uh, it made my experience shooting much better because uh, if you research surfing for five seconds you will find out that it's depending, dependent on uh, tides and the tides schedule is available to anyone with a smartphone. So suddenly I was able to uh, predict where my subjects would be and where the action would be. I knew when to stalk the paths going to the beach because it will be at the beginning and the end of the the low tide when people are going to or from the beach I knew when they would be in the water having fun and out of reach for me and there was no point bothering I knew when they would be uh, chilling in town in the bars or the parking lots um, I was able to organize my whole week uh, saving my energy and shooting uh, at the moments that would yield the best pictures also again knowing what my theme was, I saw pictures everywhere that I might have just walked on by. These were four kids uh, on the bench, four normal French kids, but they stuck out to me because uh, they were wearing matching colors. All of them were watching a variation of white and denim, white and blue, and I thought they are worth including in my uh, series. The sun was coming in and out of clouds, there was a moment of good light, I was about to go just introduce myself and ask to get a posed group portrait. But by the time I worked out the courage to go talk to them, I looked up and that's what was happening. So my camera was set and I got the picture. This picture would not have happened if I hadn't been hyper aware of what my subject is and hadn't like stuck around. Because when I walked by them the first time a minute earlier, they weren't doing anything special. I could, on any other day I would have walked by. But after a few days of shooting um, on the theme, you rewire your brain, you, your, your, the framework of how you look at things changes because you're looking for that thing everywhere, that thing that will fit your theme. So here's a few themes that you may borrow from me, free of charge. Youth, old age, sports, both organized or street sports or spontaneous games, public transport, public displays of affection, lost objects, people in uniforms, family life, bikes in the city, nightlife, modern architecture, hostile architecture, pets in the city, urban exploration, and so and so. Um, what you could do if you don't have something that like just pops up to your mind uh, is explore the photographic works that you love and uh, see if you can find uh, common themes. I really encourage you to write things down because sometimes our brains don't want to make connections uh, but if we uh, exercise at writing everything down, we might find the connections later when it's all on one page. Uh, you can also do what I just did, which is write a list of random themes and just free associate, and then come back to it later and see if one of them sticks out. Okay, I think I've gone on about this for long enough. Uh, it is a pleasure to be back on the channel. There will be more video, but uh, it might be a little while. Um, I think we all know at this point that this will never be uh, one of these one video a week very professional channels um, but you guys are soon 1000 people following it uh, so I guess there we all find something here that we like uh, I know I do and uh, I'm looking forward to the next video thank you for tuning in cheers <laughs>